All right, good morning, everyone. It is 11.01. We're going to call the uh, September 27th, 2021 Electric Utility Board meeting to order. Um, brings us to item two. Anyone signed up for public comment or any emails? Nope. nope. All right, we are now recessing an executive session in accordance with one BTCA government code 551.086 on competitive matters of Lubbock Power and Light, two BTCA government code 551.071 seeking advice of and consultation with Lubbock Power and Light's attorneys on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of the state bar of Texas clearly conflicts with chapter 551 of the government code and seeking advice of its attorneys about pending or contemplated litigation or settlement offers. And three, BTCA Government Code 551.074 to the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, and or duties of the public officer or employee and deliberate the appointment of a public officer or employee, the AUB. We are now an exec. We're gonna be, it is 2.11. And the Electric Utility Board is reconvening into open session. Um, I will note that uh, Mr. Schultz left at 1.30. That brings us to item number seven. Uh, we need to approve the minutes from the regular Electric Utility Board meeting on August 17th, 2021, and the special meeting held on August 31st, 2021. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Motion. Got a second. All those in favor, do so by raising your right hand, saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same. That's approved. Item eight. Mr. Chairman, the only thing, the only thing that uh, I wanted to mention was that I will, I will, uh, will be given notice that I am leaving in February of 22, retiring from this position. So I just want to make that public. And Matt wanted to give a brief update on some of the changes in our billing and customer services. Thank you, Mr. Pacala. I will say we do appreciate your service and getting us through all the transitions and everything else that have gone over the past seven years. So thank you very much for your service and uh, you will be greatly missed in February, 2022. To make that official, February 28th, 2022. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rose. Okay. So just, just really briefly here, I wanted to walk through, as you all know, we've, we've moved to a uh, new billing and customer information system. Uh, you know, February of this past, uh, or February 21, uh, we went live with this, and this came after, you know, an extended period, you know, kind of over two years of testing and getting input from various different departments before we went live with this. Um, as you know, City of Lubbock Utilities provides consolidated billing and customer service for Lubbock Power and Light, water and wastewater, City of Lubbock stormwater, um, solid waste. So they all had input as we went through this, but after go live as we've worked through kind of issues as you do, um, we've been uh, meeting and involving them. So just on a very high level, we just wanted to kind of walk through and talk about some of the things that we've gotten accomplished and, and looking forward kind of what we're working on. Um, so, you know, post go live, one of the d issues we dealt with were um, multi-property owners, people that have a bunch of rental properties and things. Cause one of the things that we did was, you know, consolidation of that. And so working directly, we had, we've had numerous meetings with, with multi-property owners around the city, um, kind of mid-sized you know, to large, and even some, some smaller folks you know, just own a handful of properties. But one thing we've been trying to do is work with them so that we um, fix their account so it, it's one that they can work with, that they understand, that they can easily work with their tenants and, and folks on it. So for example, on request you know, for folks that had split up billing, or that got consolidated building, billing, we worked on splitting those out as they wanted it. You know, we're working on providing subtotals by account on the bill for people that, you know, have a bunch on there. Um, we have a new account support group that's doing a wonderful job working directly with our larger customers and providing them with direct customer service. And I think that's been very beneficial. That's something that was asked of us by this group uh, kind of from the very beginning, you know, we have kind of more complex accounts. So is there somebody that we can work with directly so that it's not necessarily always calling into the main line, but we have an ongoing relationship that if something comes up, you know, it can be fixed quickly. So that new group is, is now working with these folks directly. For example, have, we had a really good meeting with the mall 
um, about their account, um, where Yolanda, who works with us, uh, went and met with them, along with Steve Moon, who works with me. They had a very good meeting. And again, the goal is trying to make sure that these folks' accounts are set up in the way that they, they, they need them to be so they can conduct business. Um, another issue that we ran into kind of midsummer, we had a high number of bills that got caught up uh, basically for review. And we do every single summer, but this summer we had kind of a larger than, than normal amount. And so City of Lubbock Utilities staff um, worked 60 to 70 hour weeks through the summer to try to make sure that we got all these bills out, that they were accurate, because that's the most important thing is making sure that the building was accurate. But it did cause some delay in terms of bills going out, like in the July timeframe, which we extended their due date, but then that puts it right up against their August billing. And so we've had to work a lot directly with customers on uh, kind of payment extensions and making sure that that doesn't hurt them in a way uh, in their budget that is kind of unnecessarily cruel as we go through this process. But because of all the work that, that they've done, uh, Jamie's group, we're now seeing that number of bills that are being held up going way down. We're seeing bills that are going out on time. So as we head into the fall, um, hopefully that will not be an issue as it was uh, for parts of this summer. Some of the additional items that have been implemented that we're working on is working with municipal accounts to make sure that we clean up their billing, uh, enhancing deposit refund process, improving our IVR functioning so that it's more efficient when people call in. We've talked about that before in terms of like when somebody calls in because they want to report an outage, not necessarily making them have to list their account number. Um, and so we have, for example, a meeting tomorrow to further go over the new IVR changes so that it kind of works best for our customers. Um, the read rates for electric and water meters have has vastly improved, and so that's going to help in terms of the timely issuing of bills. Um, we're working very closely with solid waste and stormwater on their billing of their customers. That was one issue at the beginning that was that was uh, causing problems, and so we've worked a lot with um, you know Brenda Haney and with uh, Mike Keenum and their groups to make sure that they're able to bill their folks appropriately, and approving functioning concerning like customer letters and notifications that go out for customers large and small. So just wanted to point out really quick that it's been a long summer working through these processes, but we've seen a lot of improvement uh, heading into the fall. Uh, we feel like the system's a lot stronger today than it was you know, just two or three months ago as we worked through and kind of retrofitted. Uh, but just wanted to say that the city manager's office has been very helpful in solving issues, and we've been having regular meetings to keep them up to date. Um, Phil Williams, who we brought in to, to work with us um, from the outside, he's done a great job organizing a lot of these kind of projects and working with the various different groups to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to get everything cleaned up. And then just to say that for some time now, every Friday, there are meetings with myself and David and with Jamie Wood, uh, Michelle Cook, uh, Ranu Monik, and Phil Williams to go over kind of what we've completed this week what we've got coming next week, and then additional items of consideration. Uh, and we communicate that with the city manager so that everybody, every single week, is informed of the improvements that we're making, but also the challenges that we're going to be facing next week. So luckily, we're seeing some of those big ticket items uh, moved over the completed category. We still have a lot of small things we're working through, but we've seen good progress through this. And so we're hopeful as we go to the fall that um, a lot of these issues we've seen will no longer be. So really quick snapshot of a lot of work, but just really want to thank uh, Jamie and Michelle's groups for all the work that they've done because I'm sitting up here talking to you, but as I said in the beginning, we've got folks that have been working every single weekend this summer. And it's, it's been very hard on them, but they've done a fantastic job and, and they really should be commended for all the hours that they've worked to get us to where we are today. These, these issues are never easy, there are always problems, but we feel like we're working through them and, and the system's stronger today. Mr. Fields? Uh, Matt, just a quick question to clarify. Are you saying that all of the major issues are resolved, like the multi-property issues with uh, various premises? A lot, a lot of the early major issues, yes, we've worked through those, but we continue to work through the multi-property accounts today. I mean, we have some folks that have come back and said, we have it where we need it, and, and everything's working properly. Again, the mall was one that we had very good meetings with them in terms of their setups, but there still are some folks out there with realty companies that are still coming back and saying, 
I don't, how, I don't like how this looks, I wanna change this. So we're still working with them individually to try to get it to where they, they need it to be. So without getting too far down into it, are we making software changes that could involve money? Or are we talking about bill print issues? Well, cer certainly there are bill print changes, but Jamie, if, if you want to. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Stafford? Is Phil Williams from the city, or is he one of ours? No, he's, he's somebody that we brought in. He's a, he's a former general manager of a municipal t utility that now works as a consultant. And so we brought him in and his team so that they, you know, for anything that, that we're not doing, he can have constant meetings with the different departments of the city, gather information. He did a lot of, he and his group did a lot of work at the very beginning, gathering up just all the long ticket list items that needed to be fixed or modified um, and, and has brought him back to us. So he's helped us organize this and kind of get a marching order in terms of challenges that we need to, we need to address. Right, thank you, Mr. Rose. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, as y'all might have seen, we put out a, a press release, um, I guess a week ago this past Friday, notifying folks that we are moving back to normal business operations coming in the fall, which does include um, customers potentially being disconnected for non-payment. Um, for very different reasons, this was the second summer season that we've gone through where we did not disconnect a single customer for non-payment. But as we move into the fall, we need to return back to that because as you can imagine, any time that you move to a non-disconnect kind of moratorium status, you're gonna have some customers that just simply stop paying on their account and you let that go too long and they get into a position where there's just no way that they can pay for what, they have, what they've consumed in terms of water and electricity. So we have, we have an order in which we're going through this, so it's not kind of everybody at once, but we're working through kind of a small numbers in a methodical manner as we go through it. But as that press release stated, and I've been notifying media, and it's up on our website, um, there are numerous, numerous payment assistant agencies that they can go through, but most importantly, we're in communication with uh, Karen Murphy and community development, because they have ample funding uh, right now for folks that need help on their utility bills. And where some of their normal funding only covers electric, um, some of the funding that they have right now can cover entire utility bills. So we've really been trying to stress to the public that as we move back um, to doing disconnects again, they need to get with community development and fill out an application because if they qualify for it, you know, there are instances where they could have their entire utility bill uh, covered by some of these funds that are available, but it's going to be income based and, and they need to fill out the application to see what they qualify for. Um, so again, trying to get that word out and the call center is doing a great job as folks are calling in, working with them individually on, on payment plans and getting them to where they need to go with the assistance agencies. Um, because we need to get folks caught up, we need to get back to normal business, but certainly if somebody has been economically impacted by COVID or is somebody that falls into that category that is normally has you know, financial hardship, that they know where they can go for assistance um, before any sort of severance activity takes place. Ms. Stubbard? Matt, how big is that pool of people? Uh, is it 5,000 or so people that are in that pool of non-payment, or is it larger than that? In a, in, a, in a general sense, I'd say that's about that's about right. So it's 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 definitely larger than it would normally be, but that's what you're going. We saw it last summer when we did not disconnect because of COVID. Um, we see that similarly similarly this year, um, where we did this moratorium just simply because we had moved to the new billing system. Um, so it, it's a large number, a little bit larger, I think, than it was last year. Thanks, sir. Bring us to item nine. Joe. Good afternoon.
afternoon. I uh, just wanted to present to you all the uh, power cost recovery factory winter rates for the winter season this year, which runs uh, October 2021 through May 2022. Um, and again, before we, we uh, put out the pricing, I just wanted to let you know how impactful natural gas pricing is to our energy costs. Of course, the purchase cost recovery factor is a direct pass on to the customer. Um, this, this is what we're charged for the energy and then it's passed on to the customer. So again, there's no base rate increase um, on any of our rate classes. This is just a pass through cost that, that we pass on to the customer. Um, again, as you can see, we were heavily subsidized the past couple of winter seasons due to low natural gas pricing, which uh, you can see a couple of years, winters ago it averaged about 82 cents a MMBTU. Um, for last year, it, it rose up about 157%, which was still relatively low, about $2.11, but uh, unfortunately for this uh, winter season, it's projected to come in at about $4.28 a MMBTU, uh, which is a 102% increase. Uh, season over season um, and a 400% increase from a couple of years ago. So um, as I said, our, our, our PCRF rates are increasing, but unfortunately it's a direct correlation with the increase in natural gas pricing. This, is, this isn't anything that um, we collect from the customer, it's just a pass-through cost that we uh, provide the customer. Um, with that being said, the, uh, the rate class, rate one was our rate, which is our residential rate, um, is a total of 0.08785 cents per kWh. Um, rate 16, which is our commercial customers and one of the biggest customer base we have as well, um, is 0 0.44740 with a demand charge of $7.87. Um, those are the two rates that I like to highlight as those are the majority of our customers on the, customer, on the commercial and residential side. So with that being said, unless there's any questions, um, those are the rates that we're projecting for the winter season this year. Questions for Joe? Easy. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And now we're new. In the spirits of keeping things moving, let's dive in. We're going to start off with our balance sheet as usual. You would notice our cash and cash equivalent on the very first line item, we are at $75 million. Nothing to worry, just the timing differences and when we are getting our funds. And after we made a payment for Hold Harmless and all of our purchasing costs, we are just a little bit lower on that. On the other hand, our accounts receivable seems to grow month after month. Uh, part of that is the fact that we have not been canceling our customers. So now that we have returned back to the normal services of our business practices, we should be seeing some decrease in that. And 1.5 million of that money is also our, our cost revenue that we are going to be receiving from the other parties that are participating. Our construction in progress uh, is going to be surprisingly low to you guys, but as I mentioned before, we have just now moved all of our assets into transmission, so nothing to worry about. We've just moved the category down. On the next page, when we take a look at the liabilities on our balance sheet, very first slide on a minute accounts payable, we are at 27 million compared to where we were at the end of the last year at 26. We are very much in par. Our notes payable at 245 million point six. That number would stay until now we pay it off. In September, we have received our fundings from bonds, as I presented to you months, our last month and a month before that. That number is going to stay until you guys see the end of the year financial statement, and then it would just vanish, because we did receive the funds. And all of that money would convert into our bonds payable. It will just have a long-term bonds payable instead of short-term notes outstanding. Now, when we take a look at the revenue sides of everything on the income statement on the next page, as we have mentioned to you before, we are in an under-collective state right now, so that is just making our bottom line look better. On the expense side of our income statement, we have purchased on the fuel power cost at $21 million right now, which is substantially higher than where we were at this point in time last year. Just That is just due to natural gas prices and the cost that is being just increased at this point in time. When we move on to our next statement of cash flow, we have positive cash flow from operating activity, always a great thing to see. Uh, we do have a negative 
cash flow from our financing activities. Again, that is just the timing differences. And when you see the bonds come on the books, that numbers would change and those just keep on fluctuating, just like we have in our investment activities, being a positive number this month. Any questions for me? Questions? Is it right? Good? All right. Thank you, ma'am. I think that covers all items 7 through 10. So that brings us to the consent agenda. Um, there's items 11 through 21. If no one board member has any specific discussion on any of those, I would entertain a motion for items 11 through 21. So moved. Have a motion by Kevin. Second. Have a second by Gwen. All those in favor, do so by raising your right hand, saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same. Those are approved. Brings us to item 2020. 22, not 2022, brings to item 22. That's going to be a mouthful going forward. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all.